Hello, I'm Richard Hooper, and I'm pleased to be joined by Ori Nal of Gilat. Ori, thank you for joining me today. Pleasure is mine. Now, you've been involved in the defence industry for several years. What are your key observations? So well, I would say the following. We, we see now digital transformation happening uh, all around us and concepts from the civilian uh, world uh, of various uh, digital applications and digital devices that we are utilizing in our day-to-day -day life uh, are also apparent in, in, military, in the military ecosystem. And the term that is being used is some, sometimes is net-centric battlefield or net-centric warfare. And this is being used for navigation, for communication, obviously, for blue force tracking, uh, various applications uh, that uh, require information sharing between different parties. And this is making military operations, what I would call more data thirsty. They require constant, reliable connectivity. And the traditional uh, communication methods are no longer sufficient to independently support this without SATCOM. SATCOM, and by the way, not just SATCOM, but SATCOM is a key component, uh, is an enabler to this digital transformation in the military ecosystem. In, in addition to that, if I may, uh, we also see another major trend, uh, which I like to call the convergence of COM SATCOM and MIL SATCOM. In the past 10, 15 years ago, maybe a little more, the engines of technology used to be the, the defense companies. It was the Lockheed Martins and the Boeings uh, of, of the world. But today we have Microsoft and SpaceX and Amazon, and uh, their investment in, uh, in research and development is uh, 10 times more than, than what the defense companies uh, are doing from, from various uh, reasons. And the military ecosystem is, is looking to tap into that. They don't want tailored solutions that are uh, built for, for military and only evolve when there's a new project. They want something that is constantly evolving in the pace in which the technology is, is evolving. Uh, but they want it in camouflage colors and with all the security and the military regularization that, they, that they're used to, to have. So we, the vendors, we need to adapt to that. Well, you know, considering the major trends in SATCOMs, you've got multi-orbit constellations, you've got the LEO game changer, you've got software-defined satellites, high-throughput satellites. How do you manage to address that whole spectrum well that that's that's a question that's right on the on the spot uh, so uh, in, in gilat we coined the term the elastics era of uh, of space and this and this covers ngso's and vhds satellites software defined the satellites uh, i would add to that the uh, cloud ecosystem that uh, that is also apparent in in this area and, uh, and in addition, the dynamic access scheme that is being utilized with this type of, uh, of satellites, meaning that if in the past we used to see a satellite with a specific predetermined coverage with some flexibilities, now we see something that's constantly in changeable, adaptable to the requirement of the, of the operators. And, and this means this, all these trends, all these new things mean that there is better performance available, new capabilities available, new applications that, that now can be achieved. And this abundance of, of capacity and, and capabilities and the high degree of flexibility in the space uh, part of the, the system requires for the suitable technology uh, in the ground segment to, to utilize all these capacity and capabilities. So Gilat SkyEdge uh, 4 Visa platform uh, encompasses uh, this uh, concept. Uh, it's a platform for multi-orbit uh, operation for software-defined operation, cloud-ready. And it's, it's, the design is based on what we call elastic architecture, going back to the elastic uh, era of, uh, of space, which allows this flexibility in utilization of, uh, of the capacity and the various applications. Uh, for military and in the military and government uh, domain, 
pursuant to, to what we discussed uh, earlier, this is exactly the, the requirement. Uh, this allows the military and government domain to enjoy these trends, these new developments, to tap into new capabilities. Uh, the flexibility that is required to be constantly moving forward, adapting new capabilities. Uh, and another two important uh, aspects that are more specific for military and, and government, one is interoperability. The ability to be this uh, agile and, and flexible allows you to maintain uh, certain aspects in, in collaborating uh, with uh, easily interfacing with other systems and maintaining collaboration uh, with other entities. Uh, and also security. If you consider a multi-orbit operation, it's a significant advancement in, uh, in security because for an adversary, it's becoming much more difficult to interfere uh, when you are able to switch not just from one satellite to, to another, but to an entirely different uh, orbit and, and, and a different method of operations. Now, modern uh, warfare has changed. You know, you've got unmanned platforms, you've got UAVs playing a pivotal role. How is Gilat addressing and offering products for this segment? Uh, first, I uh, fu fully agree uh, with, the, with the perception here. Uh, I think that unmanned platforms uh, are, are becoming more and more uh, prominent uh, with, with an aim to uh, take the, the operators uh, further away from, uh, from threats. And, uh, we, we see it most uh, prominently with, uh, with air, unmanned aerial vehicles, but also with, uh, with unmanned surface vessels, so, so ships and ground vessels. And the, the, the name of the game, uh, firstly, is uh, SWAP, size, weight, and power. Uh, you, you need to have the right uh, form factor, you need to uh, account uh, in these platforms for every system that, uh, that you're carrying with you, so that the satellite connectivity needs to be in the smallest uh, form factor and weight possible in order to, to be able to, uh, to be incorporated on, a, on such a platform. And when you consider power consumption, each, each uh, increase in power consumption reduces the operation time of the platform. So you need to be very, very effective here. The challenge for SATCOM on these platforms is to be able to maintain uh, the, the satellite uh, lock during extreme flight patterns. And when you see, especially in, in UAVs, the, the shift towards smaller, more tactical platforms in higher volumes, uh, this is becoming a bigger challenge because the, the older, bigger platforms are flying quite calmly and the, these new platforms, they maneuver more aggressively. And, and this is the, the, the challenge. I'm happy to say that, uh, that in Gilat, uh, we have a considerable uh, experience and track record in this uh, segment with UAVs uh, in, in multiple sizes. So not just the, the bigger platforms, what is called the male medium altitude uh, long endurance, but also with the small tactical uh, UAVs, ST UAS, ST UAV. A class uh, three or large class uh, two uh, that have significant um, more aggressive uh, maneuvers as, uh, as I noted. Uh, I, I can't really uh, refer to a specific uh, customers, but we have multiple customers uh, for both our BRP60, which is our product for the male uh, uh, size, and for our uh, BR-72, which is the, the small tactical uh, product. Uh, we repeat orders from, from these uh, customers, dozens of systems uh, in operation in the field uh, with very, very high level of satisfaction. Now, everybody talks about it, security. How do you ensure security for the platform when you are delivering for government military customers it's a challenge what is the challenge uh, talking to the challenge and, and i'm taking a concept here from the world of uh, cyber security and penetration uh, tests 
uh, I think that the adversary or the threat is constantly changing and evolving. And this is the main challenge and the main mindset that you need to have when trying to apply security to military platforms and any platform in any ecosystem in general. So our process, even if we're talking about you know, physical security, something like authentication or anti-tampering components, the idea is always to, to try and say, okay, now I've applied this solution, where am I still exposed? And this is an ongoing uh, process. Uh, aside from, uh, from this, and more, more specifically to the domain of, uh, of SATCOM, uh, Transec is, uh, is becoming mandatory in order to, to be able to, to say that uh, a system is in military-grade uh, security. It, it, it's the other way around, actually. We see more and more commercial systems that, that are asking for Transec in order to be sure that they are on the safe side. Uh, so, so this is the, the trend. In the place where there are more, uh, where there is more room uh, for, uh, for new uh, capabilities with regards to security is, is anti-jam. The, the ability eventually uh, to maintain a resilient uh, link, considering various interferences, uh, etc. That's the, the field of play now in the, the, uh, the area of security for SATCOM. It's a competitive world. What sets Gilat apart in the world of SATCOM technology for defense and government applications? So aside from our pretty smile, uh, what, what, what I'm happy to, to say is that uh, since Gilat has uh, capabilities, in-house capabilities across all the components of the SATCOM uh, solution. So we have our subsidiary Wavestream uh, that is a center of excellence for transceivers, SSPAs, and, and everything that revolves that area. And we have our center of excellence for uh, antennas, SATCOM on the move, in a race at the Bulgaria. We have our SkyEdge and the other modem platforms, Visa platforms. We have our NMS network management system, our world leading NMS with an emphasis on ease of use and user experience. And all the aspects that are required to provide a holistic solution for the challenges of our customers. And, and this is what is required for military and government uh, customers, being able to dive deep with them into the operational challenge, not the technical challenge, and the final solution. And uh, our approach is, is an open garden approach. So for my military customers, I'm not limiting myself to solutions that are uh, developed and uh, produced in Gilat. The expertise that we have across all the components allow us to pick and choose uh, the best and most suitable component uh, for, for a customer. For example, uh, in a requirement for a SATCOM solution uh, for patrol boats. There are a variety of very, very good vendors, uh, each with their own advantages that they, I will select from when I'm offering a solution. And the baseband will be the Gilat uh, SkyEdge uh, platform. Uh, in addition to that, I think that in the area of uh, resilient and secure cap security capabilities, uh, we have a lot uh, to say. Again, I, I can't get into the technical uh, details in, in a conversation like this, but uh, this is an important uh, front. And another concept that, that I addressed uh, earlier, uh, combat proven solutions. The ability to have a feedback loop from an actual operator that has used the system in the field. And I can say that this is the case for almost all of our systems. Uh, being able to evolve the system based on, on these lessons uh, learned is, is another major benefit and value for our uh, military and government customers. By the way, 
and then I will end to the, the answer with that. Uh, in order to expand even more this uh, uh, capability of having end-to-end -end, uh, end-to-end in-house, uh, we are, and, and this is public knowledge, we are in the final steps of an acquisition uh, process of a data path in the United uh, States, uh, which is a center of excellence uh, for SATCOM uh, system integration, uh, SATCOM on the pause, uh, with very considerable expertise uh, in various uh, areas. They are one of the leading SATCOM houses in WGS certifications. Uh, and another big addition uh, to our portfolio in order to maintain this ability to be very holistic. Well, it sounds very interesting. Thank you for talking to me today. And the pleasure was mine. Nice talking with you. And uh, I hope we can do this again sometime. Thank you.